Is there anyone who's here for the first time? Okay, welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, so the format for what we're going to be doing this morning is uh, first we'll have a meditation that I will be guiding. Then there'll be a short break. Then Venerable Children will come and give a talk. And um, the talks every month are based on a book which is called An Open-Hearted Life. And this is really a wonderful book about how to generate compassion. I mean, we already have compassion. It's a natural human quality. But it's something we can use more of. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's... It's a wonderful quality to develop in ourselves. It's good for ourselves. It's also good for other people. If we can bring compassion into our interactions with others, they feel good too. It's good for the world. And science, um, there have been uh, studies done, research done on compassion, and they find that it definitely does have benefits for ourselves, for example. It reduces stress increases our health and our chances of having a long life. And yeah, having healthier, happier, more harmonious relationships with others. So there's lots of benefits to having more compassion. And so this book talks about how to increase our compassion. And it contains a lot of very practical advice and methods, both from Buddhism, traditional Buddhist teachings, as well as from Western psychology, because it was co-authored by Venerable Children and Russell Colts, who's a he's a professor is at what Western Eastern Washington University, <laughs> and a practicing psychologist. And yeah, he's done a lot of work with like inmates and people having issues with anger, how to reduce their anger, and so on. So, yeah, it's a really wonderful book. I think there should be copies available if you don't already have one. But anyway, each month uh, we go through a different chapter. The, chap the, the book has many, many chapters. We're reaching the end of it. Um, last month, the, um, the chapter that was the, you know, talked about was chapter 66. And the title of that chapter was Compassion, Uncertainty, and listening to uncomfortable truths. So um, so in that chapter, it was actually written by Russell, and he talks about how we sometimes shy away from uncomfortable truths. These are things that exist, they happen, they're out there in the world, um, but we wish that they weren't there. And he gave examples of um, things like racism, sexism, gender discrimination, the cruel treatment of animals in the factory farming institute. So those are just some examples of things that are going on that are really not nice at all. And um, when we encounter um, these kind of truths, whether it's we're talking to someone in person and they're telling us about some experience that they've had of, of this nature, or we're listening to radio or TV or reading articles. So when we encounter these things that are going on, then our way of responding can sometimes be like, I don't want to know about this, we shut down, close off, try to run away, escape, um, and rather than facing. Um, these uncomfortable truths and and he's saying that you know this kind of reaction is actually an obstacle to compassion so if we have compassion ideally we're willing to open ourselves to things that you know are uncomfortable and unpleasant but there are ways we can do that without you know being overwhelmed or burning out or having negative reactions so we can actually learn things and grow from opening ourselves to uncomfortable truths. So we'll look at this during the meditation, but we'll first start with some prayers, um, which will be shown on the screen. 
you're welcome to follow along with the prayers if you wish, or you can just do your own meditation, reflection. Um, and then after the prayers, we'll, um, I'll guide you through some uh, guided relaxation to relax ourselves physically, mentally, and we'll have some meditation on the breath to just yeah, calm down and settle down. And then for the last 15, 10, 15 minutes, we'll do a, um, a meditation, a guided reflection on this, this theme of uh, how to have more compassion with regard to uncomfortable truths. Okay, so let's begin. And the, pur- the purpose of the prayers is to just help us have a more positive state of mind as we enter this day of activities. Um, and one of the most important um, states of mind we try to de- develop in Buddhism is compassion and love, caring about others, wanting to help others, to relieve their suffering, bring them more happiness, and so on. And so that's really what the prayers are all about, is generating um, that state of mind. So, you know, feel free to do that on your own if you're more comfortable to do so. I take refuge until I am awakened in the Buddhas and Dharma and the Sangha. By the merit I create, by listening to the Dharma, I will attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. I take refuge until I have awakened in the Buddhas, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the merit I create, by listening to the Dharma, I will attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. I take refuge until I am awakened in the Buddhas, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the merit I create, by listening to the Dharma, I will attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness happiness and its causes. May May all sentient beings be free of suffering and its causes. May all all sentient beings not be separated from sorrowless bliss. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity free of bias, attachment, and anger. Tayata Mune Mune Maha Mune Soha Tayata have some motivation behind the things that we do and it's good to try to have a, a positive motivation especially when it comes to doing things like meditation learning spiritual teachings and so on 
And the best motivation we can have is altruism, caring about others, understanding that other people and beings want to be happy just as we do, and understanding they don't want problems, pain, bad experiences, just like we do. So one way to have an altruistic motivation would be to think, I would like to learn something here today that will help me to be more helpful to others and bring more happiness, peace, well-being into their lives and to help them have less suffering and problems. So that's just a suggestion, um, but feel free to use your own thoughts, your own words to generate some kind of altruistic motivation or reason for being here. So when we meditate, it's best to be relaxed as much as possible, both in body and mind. So to be relaxed physically, just do a quick check of your body and see if you notice any tension, tightness anywhere in your body, maybe in your head or your neck or shoulders or back and if you do notice tension anywhere one way you can release the tension is to just put your awareness at that place and say to yourself something like relax let go Another way is when you're breathing in, imagine the breath going to that place and loosening and releasing the tension. So take a few moments to do that. Do the best you can to release any tension in your body, but don't worry if some of it doesn't go away. So just try to release as much as you can so that you can be relaxed and comfortable physically. <clears throat> and it's also good to be relaxed mentally. And that means putting aside or letting go of 
any thoughts or emotions that may be in our mind left over from past experiences, which could include this morning, maybe to get ready to come here and drive here, you may have faced some challenges and you might still be feeling a little stressed about those things. Or maybe last week at work or at home there were difficulties and you might still be thinking about those and feeling effects of those. So do your best to put those aside for now. You can always think about them again later. But try to give yourself a break from those thoughts, those feelings, those memories. And just be here in the present. In this present moment, right here, right now. So we're in a, a very peaceful, beautiful place. Surrounded by lots of very kind, caring people. It's good to have a sense of safety. You're in a safe place and don't need to worry about anything. So just let your mind rest and be in the present. That's not so easy to do, but one technique that helps with that is being aware of your breathing. So our breath is constantly coming in and going out and much of the time we don't really pay much attention to it. But breath is very precious. It keeps us alive. So the fact that we're still breathing in and out means we're alive. And that's very precious. And because our breath is happening in the present, it's happening right now in this moment, then when we pay attention to our breathing coming in, going out, then our mind, our attention is in the present, not in the past or the future. So just with your mind, your awareness, Pay attention to, be aware of this gentle rhythm of the breathing coming in and going out. And don't try to control your breathing. Just let it happen naturally. Your body knows how to breathe on its own. You don't need to interfere with that. Just allow the body to breathe. Allow the breath to flow in and out. And just with your mind, rest lightly on whatever experiences, whatever sensations you feel as the breath is coming in and going out. And it's, it's normal that thoughts will come up, memories will come up. You might be distracted by sounds that you hear. So don't be surprised, worried, or upset if that happens. If your mind gets distracted away from the breath to something else, that's normal. So what we can do when that happens is to just disengage our mind from that other object, the thought or memory or sound. Just leave it aside, put it aside, and return to the breath. Just keep coming back to the breathing again and again. And don't worry if you have to do this again and again. Don't get 
frustrated with yourself, impatient with yourself, just in a kind and patient way, keep coming back to the breath again and again, each time the mind wanders away.
So our breathing is like a good friend, a steadfast friend. It's always there. Even when we wander away, get lost in thoughts and memories and stories and emotions, we can always come back to the breath. It's still there, waiting for us. And it doesn't get upset with us for wandering away. So just keep returning to the breath. Every time you notice the mind has gone elsewhere. And that way we can get a taste of, of peace and calmness, and freedom from all the busy thoughts in our mind. Okay, so now we'll make a shift into a different kind of meditation, what we call analytical meditation, which involves thinking, reflecting. So I'll invite you to contemplate certain points and give you time to contemplate those. And then at the end, we'll see if we can come to a conclusion based on what we thought about. So, compassion is wishing the relief of suffering for others and for ourselves. So it's based on recognizing that suffering is something nobody wants. Nobody wants to have pain, problems, bad experiences. It's just natural 
for us to wish to be free of those and to not have them happen to us. And there's nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with wanting to be free of suffering. According to Buddhism, that's something we deserve. Nobody should have to suffer. Everyone deserves to be free of suffering. So we already have compassion. It's something that arises in us. For example, when someone we care about is is in pain or suffering, we naturally feel moved to do whatever we can to relieve their suffering. And there's so many examples of compassion in the world. When there's a disaster, a war, people are in need, so many other people send donations or actually go and help to relieve the suffering of those people. So that's compassion in action. It's a really beautiful quality. And the world would be a dreadful place if there was no compassion. So we can increase our compassion. Um, To be able to do that, though, we do need to be willing to open ourselves up and become aware of and accepting of different types of problems and suffering, including some that make us uncomfortable, some that we're not familiar with in our experience. So see if you can remember a time when you were hearing about some kind of suffering or problem, and it could have been a person you were actually with, someone you were in the presence of, and that person is talking about their experience, talking about some bad thing, awful thing that happened to them, Or it could also be listening to someone on the radio or on TV or reading an article about some kind of problem or suffering that maybe you haven't experienced yourself. It wasn't part of your experience. And and you feel uncomfortable about it. Maybe you want to close off, turn away, avoid. Or maybe you have sort of judgmental thoughts, thinking, oh, this can't be true. Maybe they're just making it up. Or maybe they're exaggerating. And so you may have had sort of critical, judgmental, dismissive thoughts in your mind about this story that you were listening to. So try to recall if you've ever had that kind of experience.
And then check how you feel now looking back at that situation, particularly how you responded, how you felt and thought and maybe the way you acted. And check if that seems to be a compassionate way of responding. It could also be helpful to check if the tables were turned and you were trying to tell someone else about a problem you were having, some difficulty, some suffering you were experiencing, and the other person responded in the way that you did in your own experience, how would that feel? How would you feel to be on the receiving end of that kind of response? So imagine having the chance to go back to that situation and do it differently, more compassionately. And if that seems difficult to do, a few things that could help would be to remember the Buddha's teaching that Suffering and problems exist. They're part of our world. Everyone experiences problems and suffering as they go through life. But they're not permanent. They're not things that will last forever. They're subject to change. They occur because of causes and conditions. And if we can change those causes and conditions, we can change the problems. We can alleviate them or even eliminate them altogether. Just seeing problems and difficulties as transitory rather than permanent and fixed can help us to have a lighter attitude when hearing about somebody's suffering.
Also, there may be things that we ourselves can do to alleviate someone's suffering. If we're actually physically present with the person, we, we can just show that we understand and that we are concerned. We can ask if there's anything we can do to help them. We can offer to pray for them. I think of ways you could have responded to at least show that you care and that you'd like to help. So to conclude the meditation, here's a suggested conclusion from the book. And you might be able to accept this and think, yeah, this is what I'd like to do. Opening ourselves to the stories of those who are different from us is a powerful gateway to wisdom. While some of those stories are tragic, many others are fantastic, inspiring, and filled with knowledge that opens us to entirely new perspectives on life. It all starts with learning to listen. So let's just do a mental dedication of what we've done so far, doing the prayers and then doing this meditation. So let's mentally share the positive energy we've created with all beings. May it be a cause for everyone to be relieved of their suffering and problems and to find genuine peace and happiness. <clears throat> 